Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Space This Week, the Monday show where I give you all the latest news on Starship development, rocket launches from the past seven days, and everything else that's going on. Lots to discuss today from Starship, Starlink, James Webb, Vulcan, Soyuz, and much more. This episode was sponsored by Squarespace, the world's finest website builder. More on them a little bit later on, but first, let's talk about Starship. All eyes have pretty much been on Ship 24 and Booster 7 these past few weeks. However, all this time in the high bay, Ship 25 has been steadily growing and has been in a fairly complete state for a little while now, minus the Raptor engines, of course. And on Thursday, we finally saw it rolled out of the high bay and transported to the launch area. This is interesting then. We have Booster 7 and Ship 24 and Booster 8 and Ship 25 all down at the launch area together. Together, they make up two complete Starship stacks, so we may end up seeing a pretty quick turnaround between the launch of Booster 7 and Ship 24 to Booster 8 and Ship 25. After Ship 25, though, things are a little bit more uncertain. Ship 28 looks to be the same sort of vehicle as its predecessors, complete with heat shielding and presumably body flaps, but Ship 26 and Ship 27, the former of which is currently undergoing stacking in the high bay, will just be plain silver bullets with no heat shielding or thermal protection tiles. They're either going to be used as test prototypes or, and this is the leading theory, will be used as expendable Starship vehicles that will allow SpaceX to focus more of their attention on perfecting the super heavy first stage while still having a functional upper stage to potentially start to delivering Starlink V2 to orbit. Speaking of delivering Starlink V2 to orbit, Ship 24's payload bay door was sealed shut not that long ago, whereas Ship 25 has been rolled out with what appears to be a completely functional payload bay, so it could well be the first Starship vehicle to test the Starlink V2 deployment mechanism. Great animation here from Chameleon Circuit, showing how this could potentially work. With regard to Ship 24, it looked like crews were having some difficulties with the Ship Quick Disconnect interface. During the first stack of booster 7 and ship 24, the ship was briefly raised off the booster for engineers to inspect slash repair something, and then later on we saw scaffolding go up on the ship quick disconnect arm and around the interface panel of the ship itself. Last week, Lab Padre streams continued to capture SpaceX crews working on the interface panel for the ship, possibly indicating that something here might not be working properly, and the arm isn't connecting to the ship like it should. Perhaps this is a potential reason for Ship 25's rollout. If Ship 24 is facing serious compatibility issues with the quick disconnect interface, then SpaceX may opt to either retire it or take it down for refurbishments and let Ship 25 take its place as the first orbital prototype. All that being said, that probably won't end up being the case, as later on in the week, Ship 24 was re stacked onto Booster 7 and the Quick Disconnect arm was tested again. This time we got to watch a test of the Quick Disconnect arm detaching from Ship 24 in real time speed as it would during an actual launch attempt. So hopefully things are now fixed and things are working smoothly. Almost as smoothly as I do this Squarespace segue. Squarespace have sponsored today's episode of Space This Week. Squarespace is the number one website building platform as you should all be aware of by now. They make website creation easy, simple and fun. Just pick a starting point from an ever-growing list of hundreds of professionally designed templates and then get customizing. Squarespace is always adding new and powerful tools to their arsenal to help you make the best website for your needs. They just released Refresh 2022, which includes a whole host of new features, including the ability to design custom high-quality merch with your brand or custom designs, and Squarespace automatically handle all of the production, shipping, and inventory syncing for you. Things really couldn't be any easier. The website editor has also been updated to feature new fonts, color packs, image effects, background art, and more. If you're a small business owner, graphic designer, artist, musician, or anyone else trying to make a way in this world, then you need a website, and Squarespace is the place to make one. You can design and build the website of your dreams for free, and then when you're ready to launch, you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain by heading to squarespace.com slash matlown. Go on. Don't let anything stop you. Enhance your business today. The quick disconnect interface troubles aren't the only issues that we've seen with the orbital launch stack. It looks like the booster is tilting very slightly towards the launch tower. SpaceX may well be hard at work on the solution to this. After all, we saw extensive work to the hold down clamps the week before the booster 7 lift, with six of the clamps being replaced completely. We know a lot about all of this thanks to the great sleuthing work by CSI Starbase. If you're not following him on Twitter, you definitely need to be. On the 20th of October, SpaceX launched another trusty Falcon 9 on another Starlink mission. 
This was Starlink Group 436, the 30th Starlink launch to Shell 4. The rocket carried 53 satellites to orbit, bringing the total number of Starlink satellites launched to 3,505. Despite being the 30th launch to Starlink Group 4, the shell isn't quite filled yet. Another roughly five launches are still required to fill the shell. Shell 4 and Shell 1 are the biggest Starlink shells in Starlink Phase 1, each containing 1,584 satellites when completed. Anyway, last week's launch went well. The Falcon 9 first stage successfully landed around 650 kilometers downrange on the drone ship a shortfall of Gravitas, bringing an end to this particular booster's 10th overall flight, making it the latest Falcon 9 to hit double figures. The next launch we saw was on the 22nd of October, and yes, this was an Indian Space Agency launch, and yes, they're still slapping YouTubers with copyright claims for showing their footage, so I've had to get creative once again to show you this launch. Anyway, a GSLV Mark III launch vehicle launched 36 OneWeb satellites from the Satish Dhawan Space Center. OneWeb, of course, used to be launched by Soyuz, but due to obvious reasons this had to be changed, and this time the launch was handled by ISRO's geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark III and this was the 14th OneWeb launch overall. The third and final orbital launch of the last week was also on the 22nd of October, seen here in this unedited, politically neutral video. This was another Russian broomstick launch, a Soyuz 2.1B, which launched the Skiff-D technology demonstration satellite, along with three GONETS-M communication satellites, all to low Earth orbit. The rocket launched from the Vostochny Cosmodrome, and Roscosmos have stated that the Skiff-D will test new technical solutions for high-speed internet, while the GONETS-M satellites are designed to transmit data and provide mobile satellite communication services. Now, I'm willing to bet most of you are familiar with this image. This is the Pillars of Creation, a part of the gigantic Eagle Nebula captured by the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, ever since the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope, many of us have been wondering if we'd get an updated view, and now, well, we have one. This new image from the James Webb Space Telescope shows the Pillars of Creation in detail that we've never seen before. Now, the name Pillars of Creation derives from the fact that the pillars are a region where a high number of young stars are forming. The newly formed stars appear as bright red orbs, and the lava-like wavy edges to the pillars are ejections from stars that are still forming. Now, this image is going to be extremely important. For one, this is now everyone's new wallpaper image, but more importantly, this image will help scientists revise models of star formation. High-quality images such as this will allow researchers to build a better understanding of how stars form and burst out from these interstellar clouds over millions of years. Speaking of new NASA images, we have a new panorama from the surface of Mars. NASA released this amazing image last Wednesday, which consists of 146 individual photos captured by the mast camera of NASA's Curiosity rover. The hill to the right of the image is called Bolivar, and the one on the left is Deepdale. Visible in the background in the upper right-hand corner is the floor of the vast Gale crater. It's great to see Curiosity still delivering amazing things back to Earth, over three and a half thousand Martian days into its mission. In last Monday's episode of Space This Week, I covered how Tori Bruno tweeted this shot of the first BE-4 engine, which will power the first stage of the upcoming Vulcan rocket, being uncrated at the ULA rocket factory. Oh, and for those that couldn't find the banana for scale, it's right here. <laughs> anyway, the saga continues. We've had more photos shared, this time of the first BE-4 being fitted to the first stage of the Vulcan rocket, which is still on track to be launched in the first quarter of next year. I can't wait to see this beast fly. <laughs> Now, while not strictly directly related to space news, we did have a big announcement from Intercept Games, the developers of the highly anticipated sequel to Kerbal Space Program. Little game you might have heard of. Anyway, they announced Kerbal Space Program 2 will be officially releasing into early access on the 24th of February 2023 at a cost of $49.99 US dollars. Now, I was lucky enough to get an interview with some members of the team, including creative director Nate Simpson, before the announcement was made, and I got to ask a few questions. I think one concern that people might have is that the announcement still shows pre-alpha footage and so I asked if the game will be releasing in a pre-alpha state or not and luckily I was assured that the footage used in the announcement is a little bit old now and the game won't be releasing in pre-alpha, alpha or beta. Features for the game will be rolled out gradually, here's a roadmap, with the developers working with the community to steer development and prioritization of certain features. On release the game will be broadly similar to Kerbal Space Program 1's sandbox mode with more features being added later on down the line. 
I know multiplayer is a big area of interest for players, but unfortunately, the teams weren't able to answer any questions about it at this stage, so I don't really have any insider scoops for you there. If you want to hear more, I did make a full video covering the trailer and my thoughts, as well as some more kind of insider information from the developers I was able to get. I'll put a card on screen if you're interested. But I'm sure I speak for a lot of, if not most of, the people watching this video that I'm really excited to see what the teams have pulled off with Kerbal Space Program 2. I would like to give a massive thank you now to all the people who could be seen on the left of your screens. They're my Patreon and channel members and it's their kind generosity that allows me to continue making these videos for you all. If you want to join their ranks then follow the link on screen or via the one in the description and hey, if either of the on screen video suggestions look interesting to you then do consider checking those out as well. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching, I'll see you all next time.